All right. So in our current events, what we want to tackle tonight is uh, the ongoing attack on uh, the rapture that we, we constantly see, the ongoing attack on uh, um, dispensationalism. And one of the things I want to make a statement before we get into this is the devil always attacks that which is true. He doesn't attack that which is a, a lie. He always attacks that which is true. And what I typically find out with people like Eric Metaxas or anyone else like this Benjamin Thomas or whatever, they go on the rampage, they go on an attack, and they're not willing to be civil about it. They're willing, they're, they're just, you know, they can't just say we agree to disagree. They go on the offensive and the attack. And uh, I can tell you this, after, after what you're going to hear from Eric Metaxas and this guy, especially Eric, he's a, a prominent figure, and he's been at churches like Jack Hibbs' church and other pre-trib, pre-millennial churches, and now he shoots his mouth off like this, he's going to lose all credibility. No one's ever going to invite him again. And I think at this point, Eric Metaxas has lost all credibility in my book. And uh, I'll show you why, because he went somewhere where you don't go. Uh, not the fact that he, he doesn't, you know, uh, uh, you know he could disagree, we could disagree about the rapture, and that's fine. But it's when you go on the offensive and the attack and say it's a doctrine of Satan, it's a doctrine of hell, and it's bad theology, now we got another problem now. Now, now you're on a different level now. We're not agreeing to disagree. You're on a, 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 almost a false teacher level at that point in time. So anyway, I wanted to, to bring this up because this is part of the growing apostasy in the church. And the fact that true doctrine will always be attacked and false doctrine will all be, uh, always be peddled by guys like this or anyone else. So this is part of the scenario that we're having to deal with. So apostasy in the church. So anyway, he's interviewing this guy, Benjamin Thomas. I've never heard the guy uh, from Adam uh, before. Um, but anyway, he wrote a book, and I guess anyone can write a book these days. Uh, you can self-publish or whatever. And so um, they go on attacking the rapture doctrine. So the first thing, let's deal with the first clip, and then I'll go from clip to clip and go through all of this with you, okay? Yeah. What I and uh, for me... Um there came a point where I really started to recognize how the world really worked and behind the scenes, the power structures that, you know, frankly had done a really good job of, I think, managing our world for the enemy's team. And uh, frankly, it's kind of like the, kind of like the Rhino Republican Party, a lot like the Rhino Republican. But I mean, it's Party. exactly like that, right? Like you, you kind of um, anyway, I don't want to step on your uh, your words, but you're you're saying that we had all this keeps coming up over and over and over in various disciplines so not just end time stuff and theology but this idea that there's this consensus we all buy into the consensus we think everybody on the team all the good guys agree on this consensus and then something happens that makes you say i wonder if we have missed something and it seems like you that's what happened to you well, that's absolutely right. I mean, I was poking along. A friend of mine came to my house in, in Texas at the time and sort of educated me on how the world really worked. And honestly, Eric, it scared me. Uh, when I understood how organized our enemy really was, it really scared me. I was frightened. And frankly, armed with only my teaching from my evangelical church upbringing, which was pretty much could be summarized in, yeah, things get really bad, and then one day we just get rescued. And so that was how I was brought up, that was what I was taught. And so when I heard, um, when I was educated, if you will, on how the world really worked, I got into fear, frankly. I, I mean, I thought, well, do we get rescued, you know, during the bad stuff or at the end of the bad stuff? Look, okay, you tell me the problems that you just heard from that guy. Number one, I was afraid, okay? Who told him this information of how the world works? God, Jesus, the Bible, what did he say? A friend came over to his house and told him how the world works. A friend told me how the world works. I'm sorry, uh, um, that, that's, that right there is insane. Um, this tells you how the world works. So it, when, you start in, when you start spotting 
false teachers, false prophets, whatever, notice who their source material is. For him, it's some dude that came to his house (laughs) instead of the word of God. And notice the reaction that the dude told him how the world works and it made him afraid. Okay? Now, now what I will say later on, as you'll see in, in the, uh, the videos, is that he must have ran into a dominionist Christian because I can tell by the, what, what, what he concludes all of it. What they're worried about is the deep state. Okay? And the dominionists are very worried about the deep state as well. But the dominionists are different than us. The dominionists are trying to bring the kingdom of God without Jesus. They're trying to Christianize the United States without the second coming. Okay? And, and I'll get into that in just a bit. Uh, we are not dominionists. We are evangelicals that believe that Christ has to come back and establish the kingdom. And when he does that, then the world will work. Okay? But the world is not going to work by just getting uh, uh, Christians into governmental positions and that will Christianize the whole world and then we can uh, uh, hand over the world to Jesus when he comes back after we've Christianized the world. That's insane. Okay? But that's dominionism. Okay? That's dominionism. And that's what these two uh, uh, individual characters are, 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 are hunting for right now. But... So, red flag, okay? We got the red flag. Let's, con- let's continue to read the red flags. Yeah. What I, Hal Lindsey's the late great planet Earth, whatever, that the Antichrist is going to come. It's going to be sick, bad, horrible. Uh, the saints get raptured out of here. Um, that's kind of the narrative that is not challenged very much. And what is that called? That's called a pre-trib rapture. Well, it's called... Uh, Dispensational is, is, you know, there's a lot of words for it, uh, but actually it's, I call it the rescue rapture. It, we get rescued from uh, the grips of Satan who's about to destroy us with the Antichrist, and that's generally what we've been taught for a long, long time. Implying what? That we've been told wrong. Okay, so let's unpack that a little bit. What, what did he just say? If he's talking to you and he told you this, you know, we've been all taught this and this is, this is the consensus and it's never been attacked. Let me tell you, I'm on the front lines of getting attacked all the time for the, for the proper view. There, there, there's no consensus. They hate us for our view. The rest of Christendom hates premillennialism and pre-tribulationalism. I'm sorry. We're, we're on the other end of that. No one ever attacks all millennialism. No one ever attacks post-millennialism. No one ever attacks preterism. They just get a pass. It's the pre-tribbers and the pre-millennials that are always being attacked. So I don't know what they're talking about. But again, it's called the straw man argument. And you can, you can make a straw man argument, say that this is happening, and then you knock it down. That's what they just did. Both Eric Metaxas knows better, and so does this guy who wrote this book. It is not the consensus. It is the most attacked view out there, in essence. But anyway, they're implying that, well, we've just been bamboozled. It's been all wrong. And now I have new information that I want to give everybody and correct everybody on this. Let's continue on. Okay, and so you and I talked about this, and one of the downsides of that view, and I have talked about this a lot from from a different perspective, but what it makes a lot of Christians do is say, I don't give a darn about this world. That's not biblical, folks. You're supposed to give a darn about this world. Jesus saves you uh, and fills you with the Holy Spirit so you can be uh, living out his will and his power in this world for his purposes in this world. But if you believe it's all gonna go to heck in a handbasket, and I'm gonna get raptured out of here. The, the memo is, so therefore, don't do anything. It's all gonna burn, it's all gonna burn. So you know what, I'm just gonna, we're gonna have my quiet time, I'm gonna have a nice time with the Lord on Sundays, and I'm not gonna do anything because I'm out of here. That uh, is not biblical. It's not only biblical, but who's stating that? Because nobody in the pre-trib, pre-millennial camp 
has ever made that statement. It's all going to Hades in a handbasket. Uh, l- 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 let's 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 uh, kick back and do nothing. Put on the white sheets and not do and, and let it go all to pot. No one has ever made that statement. Nor does our theology even teach that. Our theology would teach that you have to be salt and light all the way to the very end. That you have to delay the decay. That you have to be a, 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 a truth teller and a watcher on the wall and pushing back and, and engaged in the culture. But he's making a straw man argument saying those who hold this premillennial dispensational mentality and, and are hoping that they get rescued by Jesus, they just sit back and don't do anything and let everything burn up because of their mentality. I don't have that mentality. Do you have that mentality? We're, so you understand that it's called the straw man argument. It, it, it's, it doesn't exist in reality. You are making that argument up as if we believe it, but we don't. That's not what our theology teaches. In fact, the fact that, that we could be raptured at any point in time, imminency actually creates holiness, it creates urgency, it creates evangelism, it creates discipleship, it creates salt and light. Because when you know that Jesus could come back at any point in time, there's no messing around, okay? It, so the, the, that theology that he says doesn't, does, doesn't motivate Christians is the, actually the opposite. That's what the scripture says it does. It does motivate the believer. Because when you see Jesus giving parables about uh, stewards or servants, one of the things he'll say in the parable, like, like one of the stewards, the stewards will get lazy and says, my master's a long time in coming. Remember that? And what does the guy do? He typically gets lazy, and then he goes and buries the talent, and then Jesus comes back suddenly and he's not prepared. So the funny thing is, Jesus warned about that type of mentality, and it's always with a guy who never expects the master to come at any point in time, which is exactly what the opposite of what they're saying. Any view that teaches you that Jesus is not gonna come back imminently gives a, 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 produces a laziness in the believer, as the parables say, and, it's, and they're the ones who don't engage in the culture. They're the ones who don't get involved. It's the opposite of what he says. That's the reality of things. Now, to get deeper into this, dominionists, I don't, you know, he says like, well, you know, the, you know they're, they're these, these Christians are waiting around to be rescued before the Antichrist. Okay, then, then tell me this. What is the whole point of the book of Revelation then? Who is the Antichrist then? And, 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 and what do I do if there's no condemnation given to the church in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, therefore we're spared the coming wrath that is to come? That's not me wanting to escape from life. That's called the blessed hope. So, so at, at this point, I want to know, Quit telling me what your friend said to you at your house and tell me what you say about this. Because the scriptures keep telling me that we're not to be under condemnation that, and, and, and that's why we're raptured. Because it's, because it's like I was making the point uh, last night on an interview, um, there's a theological understanding about God's justice that you have to get. Why is the church removed before the wrath of God hits the tribulation? Well, first of all, Christ has taken our condemnation on the cross. For the church to go through uh, the tribulation would be considered double jeopardy in a court of law, so to speak. So you would have the church having condemnation put on that, on it, when Christ has already taken the condemnation from us. So that's called double jeopardy. You can't penalize someone twice. Okay, so that's, that's a theological treatise, but apparently they don't understand that. But, but nonetheless, the, the issue then becomes, if you think this is an escapist mentality and you want to call it the, uh, the rescue rapture in a derogatory term, then I want you to tell me how to interpret the harpazo in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And tell me what it means that I go over to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come back for you that where I am, that you're there you may be also. I want to know how you explain that. And I, want to, I, want to, I want you to tell me uh, how we disappear in the twinkling of an eye. 
I want you to explain those passages to me uh, if you're, if you're not, and, 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 unless you're just gonna sandwich them all together at the second coming. But again, they, they're not gonna do that. What I call the rescue rapture has really taken the church and put them on the sideline. People don't, for instance, run for Congress. They don't uh, you know, go to school board meetings. They don't participate in society because they believe that Jesus will come at any moment and rescue them. And I think that's the fruit of this rescue rapture uh, doc. Um, how many school board meetings have we been to, Rory? This, this, this guy, he, 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 this is crazy talk. Eric Metaxas knows the churches that Eric has been to. He's been like at Jack. He has the most political church probably in California. Our church, we're involved. We're at board meetings. We're doing this. We're doing that. We have people in our church that actually run for office. They, they, where did you think they got that from? A church telling them don't do anything. It's all going to go to a Hades in a handbasket. Just sit back and do anything. No, no one's saying that. That's not the message that comes from it. But yet, again, straw man argument, uh, uh, we're going to pretend that this view is hurting America, that this view is hurting because Christians have decided to sit on the sidelines and they don't want to be involved. They just want to be rescued like a bunch of babies. Ah, okay, gotcha. Let's keep going. What I There's it. one thing I want to tease out of that. There's another piece of that, right? On the one hand, they think Jesus is going to rescue them. On the other hand, there are a lot of people I've met that they're almost psyched to see the world go to hell. They're almost psyched to see everything get worse, like, ha ha, judgment is coming, ha, instead of being moved by compassion to help those who might be helped. They're, they're kind of glad to see it go downhill. And, and for me, that the United States of America is the classic example that like this country was founded to be a shining city on a hill, to be a beacon of, of liberty and to be able to be a place kind of a, almost like a launching pad for gospel missionaries and gospel principles and purposes around the world. And a lot of people who have this rescue, rapture rescue mentality, they're kind of like, nah, we, we're happy to see America go down the tubes. It's already under judgment. It deserves judgment because of all the babies killed and blah, blah, blah. And they're not even slightly patriotic, thinking, what can I do to help my nation uh, stand for God's principles? And they're, they're the ones buying the idea that, oh, yeah, that's Christian nationalism. I'm just about Jesus. Wow. So we're unpatriotic. Okay. Okay. We don't want to help our country, and we delight, we're psyched out the fact that America's going down the tubes. Are you psyched out that America's going down the tubes? I have to live here. You think I'm psyched out? I, I have to raise kids in America. I, I'm not psyched out that, that we're saying that men can have a baby. I'm not psyched out. It's grossing me out. I don't like the environment. I wish it would change, and I'm going to do everything I can to try to change it. But this, where, where does he get, this, get off on this stuff, man? Saying that's, that's crazy talk. This is somebody that, and this is, I can't, I, I was in my interview last night. I, 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 I've watched these guys, they're, they're going along, going along, going along, and they're fine, they're fine. And then all of a sudden they flip a switch and then start castigating everybody else as a demon that's actually, the one's actually doing the work. Um, and so to, to, to accuse Christians of, of, of taking delight. You know what that is? If, I, if, I'm, if I, you're accusing me of taking delight in the death of a culture, that is what God warned about. I do not take delight in the, in, in, in the, in, in the death uh, of anyone, God says. But, but at the same time, are you, Eric, are you not going to acknowledge that there are things in the world and in America that are going to be judged? I mean, you have to acknowledge that. Am I happy that it's going to be judged? No. But eventually, I understand justice must come. And eventually, justice must be dealt out. And it will be dealt out uh, very, very horribly in the tribulation. But at the end of the day, Eric, none of us are taking delight in watching our environment go to pot. No one's, no one's taking delight in that. I, I, I know what I know, but you're, you're making this up. Again, castigating those who believe in the truth as bad people, unpatriotic. You see where this is going? 
you. What I, we are called to be salt and light. We're called to Duh. fight, not to sit on the sidelines. We're not. And, and get the popcorn to watch it all burn. We're and, not. You know, like that's not right. And that's bad theology. And that's what led to people accepting the nonsense of like, oh, Christian nationalism, if you care about America. Right? <coughs> that is total garbage on every level. And what you bring in in this book, and I want to get to the details, is how bad uh, end time theology feeds that and has fed that and has led us to a place where the church has, I mean, imagine what happens when the church pulls the salt and light out of the culture. So bad theology. So what we believe is bad theology, okay? So now you're not saying I agree to disagree. I'm telling, he's saying dispensationalism, premillennialism, the rapture view is bad theology. Oh, so you're putting us in the category of false teachers. You're putting us in the category of false doctrine. That's what he just did, okay? Now, what have you learned about liberals and leftists before we, go, we apply it to here? Liberals and leftists will always project onto you what they do themselves, right? That's the tactic. Russia collusion, and then they're the ones messing with Russia, right? Okay, when you see that same thing in principle, in this thing, they accuse us of that which they do. That's a satanic tactic, by the way. That's a demonic tactic. And now when you see it in Christian circles, then you know kind of what's influencing this. Yeah. What a fact is, we don't fight. Nobody fights. And, really? And I think a lot of the reason people don't fight is because we've been taught there's no need to. You're going to be raptured out of here. We're going to be rescued. And uh, so this place is going to burn up anyway. And so that's generally what people believe. Now, you know, they may not use those words, but deep down inside, that is what they've been taught. And that's what they believe. Wow. I don't know about you, but we're fighting. This is insane. Yeah. What I, I met a guy the other day who he did not, he, you know, he's a garbage I collector. met a guy. He's been running the same I know a guy for 20 years. And he speaks Hebrew and Greek and Sanskrit. He can read, you know, go into a cave and read the walls. And I said, why didn't you go to college? You obviously have these gifts. You have these gifts and these talents that, that God is using you for. Why didn't you go to school? And he goes, well, I grew up in the South and my church told me there's no need to go to college. Jesus could come by any time and there's no reason for you to go to school. And he said, that's why I didn't go to school. And I think he's not alone. I think there are he's a lot of people alone. That, whose dreams what? have been, frankly, put on ice because they were taught this doctrine around end times and this, I call it the rescue rapture. Frankly, it's, it's we're going to get rescued and it, keep, it keeps people out of the game. It keeps people out of their calling and, it, and honestly, okay. it, it, it puts their, their passions and their gifts on the sideline. Okay, so classic tactic of Democrats is to give a uh, antidote story. Barack Obama used to do this a lot. You give an antidote story that's like extreme and it's not true. And it's so extreme, you're like, I can't believe someone would tell a guy not to go to college because Jesus is coming back soon. When you hear stories like that, that's called antidotes, and they're typically not true, and it's, they're extreme. Have you noticed that that's extreme? Like anyone in their right mind say, Who, if that pastor said that, that guy's an idiot. Because nobody in their right mind in proper theology would ever say, hey, don't go to school or don't go to college because Jesus is coming back tonight. What idiot would say that? You, you'd have to be a false teacher. But again, they're wanting you to think that that's actually a real example. It's not. That's a made up extreme example. I know a guy. When you hear someone tell you, I talk to a guy. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Continue on with the heresy. Yeah. And, and let's call it what it is, folks. It's bad theology. And by the way, I want to be very clear. I say this in all my speeches. Bad theology, to be clear, is from the pit of hell. Thank you. It's Satan's theology. It's not like all B-minus theology. It's from the pit of hell, bad yeah. theology. And it leads us not to doing God's will. Okay, he just made, that's it. I, I don't need to hear any more. He has just called an orthodox position in orthodox Christianity, which is premillennial, premillennial, uh, pre, uh, uh, dispensational, uh, which is orthodox in orthodox Christianity. It's, a, it's a, a, an accepted view said that that is from the pit of hell, okay? So when you got someone doing that, you're, you're walking on the line of a false teacher now because now you're condemning orthodoxy. 
And if you start condemning orthodoxy or an acceptable view in orthodoxy, the only thing you can say is we can agree to disagree. But if it's acceptable and you condemn it, now you become the false teacher because you're condemning orthodoxy. And again, we're not, we're not saying this is an A doctrine, but we're saying it's a secondary or tertiary doctrine that it is acceptable within the pale of Christianity. And you just said it's not. So you've went against scholarship, you've went against theologians, you've went against uh, the acceptable, acceptable views of Christianity into the 21st century. Okay, then I know where you're at. Let's continue on. So when you talk about bad things that happen, a lot of Christians are like, yeah, yeah, see, that's it. I told you things will get worse. And they think it's a fulfillment somehow of Bible prophecy, but at the end of the day, it has taken the church out of the game. And that's one of the reasons why we don't have great candidates running for Congress or running for president. That's one of the reasons we find ourselves in a place where Satan has taken over the seven pillars of our society. Oh. And then we are shocked. We act shocked like, oh my gosh, how did that happen? The reason it happened is the Christians were not involved. We thought things were just gonna blow up. The world was gonna burn up. And so we took a back seat. And I think that's the fruit of that mentality. And, and unfortunately, a contributor, not the only contributor, but certainly a contributor to where we are today. Oh, there's no doubt. Culture. Okay, he let the cat out of the bag. Did you hear it? He said seven what? Pillars. Oh, thank you very much. Now I know where he's coming from. He's a dominionist. Okay, so let me, let me unpack this a little bit if you're not familiar with this. This is a heresy, by the way, okay? You might have heard of it called the seven mountain mandate or the seven pillars, seven hills, whatever you want. Glenn Beck pushes this a lot of times on, on his program. He'll talk about seven mountain mandate. And Glenn Beck is a Mormon, so I don't know what he's doing dabbling in new apostolic reformation uh, 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 stuff and, and neo-Pentecostalism and, and stuff like that, but he's borrowed it. He thinks it sounds good. And Eric uh, Metaxas is now using that and, this, and, and, and buying into what this guy is saying. This guy is peddling the seven mountain mandate. Okay? And so in their seven mountain mandates, they have like seven areas that they want to uh, go after and Christianize. The government, the media, the arts and entertainment, business, education, religion, and family. Okay? And that all sounds great, but they include this as part of the Great Commission. Now, I don't know about you, but this is not part of the Great Commission. Okay? I know what the Great Commission says, and you do too, but they will incorporate dominionism and, and fr uh, from from uh, you know, Genesis and put that, infuse that into the Great Commission and make the church's mandate to Christianize the society regardless of conversion. Did you hear what I just said? Okay. It's a forcing of Christianity on the culture by force by seizing the seven pillars or seizing the seven mountains there in front of them, okay? Now let me explain, that's a heresy. That is not the church's call. The church's call is the Great Commission and to edify the saints, okay? That's the church's call. Now, as a result of conversions, as a result of people being led to the Lord, and as a result of people being discipled, it's possible then that the more conversions you have, the more your community, the more your society will act Christian as a secondary cause. But we don't put the cart before the horse. In order for someone to behave like a Christian, they have to be a Christian. They have to possess the Holy Spirit. They have to possess the new nature. And then they will want to support traditional marriage. And then they will not want to get abortions. And then they will want to live as God wants them to live. But if I'm going to force a pagan to act Christian, what do you think I'm gonna get from that? Rejection. Okay, so if I'm gonna change the culture, I can't put the cart before the horse, I have to do my job 
discipling, evangelizing, and the more people that become Christians, the more Christians those families become, and then the society affects, and then it, and, and it starts coming out. That's why America was so Christian early on, because 90-something percent of the population were Christians. And then they held to a Judeo-Christian ethic. But now what's happening? The, the fault on what's happening in the culture, it, yes, there's, the church can be blamed for a, for a lot of, of, of being silent and not doing what they're supposed to do, but that has nothing to do with believing in a rapture and, that, and dispensationalism. That has to do with lazy Christians that don't believe Jesus is coming back. That's where that comes from. The other thing where it comes from, too, is when a society does not respond to the gospel anymore, then the society will start decaying into raw paganism. That's another aspect. So we, we, I know statistics. I don't have to have an antidote. Some dude told me. I know what the stats say. More and more people in America are not responding to the gospel, especially the younger. The younger generation is not responding to the gospel. And therefore, how should I expect their behavior to be then? If they're unconverted, they're going to act like a pagan. They're going to exercise their job description. And the culture will be more pagan. So the culture thing is a secondary result of, of the conversions and the discipleship of what's going on in the church. But the seven mountain mandate says we don't care about so much conversions. We, mo we mostly care about getting these positions of power and converting the culture through force. Okay? Which, that's opposite of what we're told. So where does this come from? The Seven Mountain Mandate of Seven Mountain Prophecy is a strategy of cultural engagement popularized by Lance Wallenau and Bill Johnson. Bill Johnson's a false teacher up there in Reading in their 2013 book, Invading Babylon. It comes from a neo-charismatic Pentecostalism or what we call New Apostolic Reformation. That's where it's coming from, okay? The charismatics don't believe in this. It's the, it's the New Apostolic Reformation. This is off the chain crazy stuff. It is a false commission, okay? It, it blends in Isaiah uh, 2, it blends in Psalm 2, it blends in the dominion mandate into the kingdom of God. And they don't understand the kingdom of God. But like Isaiah 2, they take this out of context. It says, now it will come about that in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. They think they can accomplish that passage. That's why Eric Metaxas and this guy are like, this is why Christians are not engaged and they're not getting involved. No, no. We have no business getting involved in establishing the kingdom because Isaiah 2 and Psalm 2, who establishes in the last days the mountain of the Lord? That's Messiah. The mountain is, a, is not a real mountain. The mountain is a, 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 Hebrew, a, Hebrew, a Hebraism or Jewish idiom for government. So in the last days, the government of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of all the governments, that being the Messiah's government when he comes back at the second coming. They're saying we're going to do it before he comes back. And we're going to do it through arts and business and church and, and, and dissemination media, education, family, and health and government law. So basically what we have then that Eric Metaxas is now touting with this guy's book is false teachings based on replacement theology. What do you mean? Well, in replacement theology, the church replaces Israel, okay? That's a false teaching, that's a heresy. In dominionism, or new apostolic reformation, the church now takes the Abrahamic promises and the kingdom promises away from Israel and assumes it on herself and then tries to enact it and bring in the kingdom on their own, and once they Christianize the entire world, they then can hand it over to Jesus at the second coming. That's wicked, okay? Number one, it's wicked, number one, when you have replacement theology. But number two, to think that you're gonna usher arrogantly the kingdom of God without the Messiah, you're out of your mind. So when that guy said, I had a dude come over and tell me that uh, how the world works, I already know what was happening. He had some dominionist 
come and fill his ears with lies and heresies, and then this dude wrote a book. Okay, that's what's going on. The claims of the kingdom, the mountain of the house of God, it will be established by the Messiah. He will rule and reign through Israel, not the church. The church rules in the Gentile portion of the government, but Israel is part of the, 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 the Jewish part of the government. And under Jesus is David. Under them are the 12 apostles. And under them are princes and governors and, and, and whatnot for the Jewish side. The church never, ever takes Israel's promises, ever. That's a heresy, okay? <clears throat> it takes Deuteronomy that, that, that when it says that Israel will be the head of the nations and not the tail in Deuteronomy 28, that's for Israel. That's not for us, okay? So they want to fulfill Psalm 2, fulfill all of this, and, and make the mountain of the Lord in the United States. Do you see why when he mentioned in this thing, will Christian nationalism... Did you hear them say that? Okay. It's the dominionists that are being accused of Christian nationalism because of their views. Because they believe they're going to force the kingdom. And that's why even the left is scared of those kinds of mentalities. Because I can tell you that mentality, it's not coming from Christianity. It's on the level of like Islam, where Islam is going to bring in a, a worldwide caliphate and they're gonna force the situation, right? The Christian dominionists are the same mentality, okay? I mean, I, 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 one of the papers I did in seminary was on Oliver North, not the, 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 the guy with Ronald Reagan, uh, but another guy, I'm sorry, Gary North, and their dominionist mentality was eventually to usher back in the Ten Commandments and force people to submit to the Ten Commandments and the penalties attached to the Ten Commandments. Well, wait a second. What's, what, what are you talking about? You can't usher in the Ten Commandments because, because the Mosaic Law has been rendered inoperative. So in, in Gary North's opinion, then he wanted to bring in a, a, a Christian nation and then start... Uh, 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 stoning homosexuals to death, as they would in the Mosaic Law. I mean, that's how crazy these Christian, these types of Christians are. And and what I remember in my paper saying, uh, these people, they're crazy, they're nuts. It's a heresy to bring in Mosaic Law and the penalties attached to that. Okay, so why, why go there? Well, number one, this is where they get the seven mountains. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue for a short while. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven is going to perdition. So here is a mind that has wisdom. Apparently, they don't have wisdom because they misinterpreted that passage. Nowhere in that passage does it talk about Seven mountains uh, that, uh, of, of government, education, media that the Christian is supposed to seize. But Bill Johnson, the false teacher he is, and, and Wallanu, and anyone else that follows New Apostolic Reformation, take that passage in Revelation 17 out of complete context and say, there's the seven mountain mandate. That is not what Revelation 17 is talking about. Revelation 17 is talking about the beast empire. That's what it's talking about. And he's talking about seven successive, chronologically ordered beast empire uh, phases of the Roman Empire. And then the last one is a contemporary empire with 10 kings. That's what Revelation 17 is talking about. It's talking about the Tarkin kings, the consulars, the plebeians, the republicans, the triumphant. And then contemporary with John was imperialism, and we have imperialism till today. Uh, and that will happen till the middle of the tribulation, and then we have absolute imperialism that will happen with the 10 kings, with the Antichrist taking over, and then eventually uh, the seven submit to him and he kills the other three. That's what Revelation 17 is talking about. It is not talking about seizing the government, seizing education, seizing all this other stuff. So basically what you have then is Eric Metaxas has put himself in the camp of a false teacher. And the guy he's touting on his program is a false teacher. And again, this is disappointing, but it is evidence of the great apostasy. 
that here we go again, another one of the Christian celebrities that people trusted has now fallen and cannot be trusted. And that's where I'm trying to warn everybody, be careful with these Christian celebrities. They, they're burning out, man. They're, they're going good, they're going good, and all of a sudden, boom, they crash. And that is the nature of apostasy. You leave that which you held was orthodox and you leave it for a false teaching. And that's what not only Eric Metaxas did, uh, but this other guy did. So be, be, be very, very careful these days, guys, who you're listening to. And again, it all, what does it come back to? You gotta know this. That's what it comes back to. If I know this, I can spot Eric Metaxas. I can spot when he says, a dude came to my house and told me how it was. That's it. I, I, I've checked out what's, what's, when you say that. <laughs> Crazy, right? Anyway, uh, we got to get out of here. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for what we can uh, understand tonight, especially in the realm of suffering uh, and what we have to do to be able to connect to the Messiah in that, to be able to process that and get healing from that, Father, in all that we have to suffer and do so that we can be prepared to give up our lives uh, for what you have called us uh, to do in our lives. So, Father, as we go, help us to have our radar up, to be wary that, that wolves in sheep's clothing are out there, and to help us to know our word to spot them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you guys.